Hello everybody and welcome to the part two of Com Common Rider Kuga Commentary. Yep, that's right. This is where we talk about Common Rider Kuga. For again. The first, uh, again, yes. Uh, you were going to say for the first time. Bro. I was going to say for the second time. I was going to say for the second time. I know what you meant, but I heard the, I heard the F come out of right, your mouth. Four. It was going to be the F for four. Not no, you said for that, and then the then the f the f sound came out. I have audio recording right now. <laughs> we'll check the tapes later. In the meantime, <laughs> by the way, this is Alan, and I'm Scott, and we're going to be going over uh, about the middle third of Kamen Rider Kuga from about episode twenty two ish to thirty five, give or take, give or take. Uh, so, la last we left off, we had been talking about uh, common, uh, how Kuga, Godai here, had uh, just ha had a, a near-death experience. And by near-death, I mean he flatlined and died for like half a day. Uh, and then was back uh, doing kick-assery, uh, because that's how you do as a common writer. You die and you just don't let that stop you. Yeah. Uh, and if you need catching up on that, you can watch our previous video. Uh, or you could actually watch Kamen Rider Kuga and we'll actually witness it, but hey, who's going to do that? That's also a really good idea. Kamen Rider Kuga is actually really, really good. It's really engaging. Uh, even for an older series, almost uh, almost 20 years old at this point, Like it's got uh, it's got pretty pretty good acting, uh, at least for a kid's show anyway. Yeah. Like, it's not that bad. Uh, it's got really good music. Uh, really good action scenes. We definitely talked at length about the action scenes in our previous video. Um, yeah, well, you talked. You talked about it. I. I, I definitely talked about it. Yes, and I, I, well, I, I meant we as in like a collective. But um, but yeah, uh, Kamen Rider Kuga is is very well done. Uh, definitely, definitely betrays a lot of expectations about what you what you would. Expect from a tokusatsu. if you if you start from a later rider series and then come back, it's really weird when everything is taken more serious and not like play. It, it they're not like their even their audience is children, but because it's Japan, they treat their children uh, more. Uh, they they treat their children as they're more intellectual than we treat our children, and we because we you know we give them like stupid cartoons and stupid uh, Power Ranger shows, except for some of the ones that I guess came out recently that were okay in general. <laughs> okay in general, indeed, yes. Yeah. Um, but at this point, I guess we can uh, start go going over uh, after our. God, my notes are all fucked up. Uh, yeah, so after after uh, Godai came back from the dead and fought the uh, the poison mushroom creature, uh, then we start with then uh, then the next one is the chameleon, right? Yes, yeah, it should be the chameleon. So there was a chameleon going around, uh, basically announcing where his next kills were going to be, uh, and this is the part where the police are realizing. That they're they're speaking in Japanese. They've learned uh, the 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 Grongi, the monsters, have learned the 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 human language and can now verbally communicate with with society. And that just adds an extra layer onto them. Like before, they weren't able to uh, basically communicate with humanity, but now they can. And that just that adds to to a uh, it, it adds to their sense of of danger because now you can. Now, you now they have proof that these things are intellectual creatures as opposed to just... Yep, not only that, but you also get, definitely get a, a, a better sense of feel for their characters and, and, and the how the Grongi are as individuals. I mean, it, well, you, yeah, you get, the, you get the better sense because like, up until now, all we've been seeing them is talking to each other and the like in their native tongue and then you kind of get like inferrings as to what's going on and you get you get the feel for like how some how some grongi or uh feel about others but then like more and more they're sprinkling in like real japanese which is like 
uh, which is like now we're actually like knowing what they're saying and figuring out like everybody like the entire time you know the bat is a fucking is a or the bat grongi is a fucking disgrace uh disgrace bitch ass monster and now they're now they're verbally just saying it like aha you fucked up you're the wor- you're the worst one of us all blah 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 yeah exactly um so this ties in to eventually when they corner the the chameleon uh he's able to blend into his surroundings and they and they and they they corner him quote unquote uh but then he just starts killing the cops like cuz uh, i guess being invisible means you can teleport and you become intangible because uh at one point he literally be turns invisible the cops shoot exactly where he was standing and you think oh he did the invisible guy thing and moved and then it goes, no, he didn't move. Well, I wouldn't say he became intangible. We already know at this point that conventional police firearms and even the new ones that they're making just don't work. Yeah, but these were supposed to be the new ones Mark II, which I know didn't work like half a second ago. <laughs> but they were supposed to be like the Mark IIs. But uh, either Mark way... Three, remember, Mark threes are going to heal them. <laughs> <laughs> Shut we up. went from working to not working, and now now we just got to escalate to healing. They adapt it to smoke. No, that's not what that means. <laughs> Besides, they use the they tried to use the Mark III on the on the, the motorcycle one, but we'll get to him. We'll get to him. So for whatever reason, uh, our chameleon our chameleon Grongi friend here decided to be a true bro and explain basically the rules of uh, the Gagaru. No, he, do- he doesn't He doesn't exactly explain the rules. He just explains that there are rules and they everything ha- and everything has a uh, everything has a, a pattern purpose. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So so for whatever so what, I guess out of the goodness of his heart he decides that he's going to tell No, he's just he's super cocky. It's just being super cocky. He's like you're humans, you're not going to fucking figure it out. Yeah, I know, it's great, actually. Yeah, he just decides to just tell humanity, give them the information that they were missing for a long time. Because, But even 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 with this information, they they still got to wonder, like, what the ultimate goal of all of these gegerus or, 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 or whatever are. And, um... So, so Godai defeats the chameleon guy. Uh... <laughs> by having Ichijo toss him his gun, going into Pegasus form, and then using Pegasus's super advanced hearing to hear his footsteps out of all of Tokyo, out of all of central Tokyo, just hears his footsteps. Uh, and then he grabs onto the Goram. Yeah. <laughs> he grabs onto the Goram and it flies him up into the sky and he snipes him like a... Like From a, like fucking, I don't know, like... A hundred kilometers away or some bullshit. Yeah, it was it was crazy. That was probably more like it was probably more like ten kilometers away. Oh yeah, you know whatever. Uh, either way, he sniped an invisible target using the sound of his footsteps from the air in downtown Tokyo. Yep. Um, but uh, while this is going on, uh, the our our the bat our bat bitch boy that we've been talking about, he was doing the thing. You know, mm-hmm. he was doing those nightly flights. And uh, he he was do- he was doing things like for for whatever reason he found a thing in the on the ground or in the buried in the earth and took a piece of it with him and we have no idea what it means yet. Well, yeah, we I do because I remember, but Alan doesn't hear. Yeah, th- this this bat motherfucker is playing the long game and he's playing it hard. Yes, uh, he's still trying to sneak in it back into the game and he's. And he's scheming and plotting. He's he's really trying here. He's really trying. Um, and, uh... Man, and then the next episode, suddenly 1,400 people are dead. <laughs> yes! Oh, man, this is our, uh... <laughs> This is our off-screen fucking monster, man. Uh, th- this guy, this guy is a true champ right here. He was trying to finish that Gageru all in one fell swoop, I guess. Because, all right, all right. So, for, for however, however long it was on the show, like in universe, it could have been a couple of days, could have been a week. Uh, but for us, we literally went from one episode to the next, 
and Godai is talking to Ichijo and just like, what was the casualty count? He's like, oh, 1,389 or some or something like that. Some bullshit. <laughs> some crazy crap. And we're sitting here like, wait, did we miss an episode? And it's just like, no, that was the there, count. There, there, was a, there was a one Grongi who just decided that he could do it, and then he did it, and just kind of fucking died off screen. Yeah, like, like wow, they decided to just kill 1400 people off screen i i don't i don't know exactly how to feel about that but it's like holy shit uh so now i guess uh grongi number 35 is become sort of our uh our, our memetic champion our, yes. our the the one who would have won it all had he not or had he not fought kuga just yeah. he, he did such he did such a good job and I don't know how he did a good job so I can't criticize him <laughs> so he just he just did such a good job and it just had been, I don't know Kuga fucking did a thing and then whatever he's dead now. Yeah uh and, and speaking of Kuga doing things uh this is this is also around the time where Godai starts talking about his uh his beery beeries or or his tingling or aches or whatever you want to translate that as but he's talking about having a uh, biri biri is a Japanese onomatopoeia for the sound of electricity, uh, and that only makes sense when you realize why he's saying biri biris. But like, I, I, I guess the closest thing you could say is how he's talking about it is tingling or aches. Is I, I guess, but it's like I'd assume um, that it's he's just talking about a. Like a ting, like the tingling that you get from getting shocked, and then they just, they just kind of like go, fucking loop to loop, and then end up on Beery Beery. Yeah, I, it's probably some kind of like slang thing that we don't get because we don't speak Japanese. We only speak Weebanese sometimes. Yeah, and by we, I mean I. Um, I mean, I, I, I can, I just don't do it as much as him. Oh, I definitely do it. I, I extra bother my friends with it. It's great. It's fantastic. So much fun. Um, and uh, as, as this is happening, we get the Praying Mantis. And the Praying Mantis is pretty cool. Uh, it's, uh, it's apparently the last of, of the meh class of Grongi or whatever it was, right? It was yeah. The, the meh class. Yeah. Uh, they were the last of the certain classification of Grongi. That uh, I, I guess they're trying to to upgrade to move up in the hierarchy, and this is the last one. This praying mantis style, where she gets on a train and tags all the people in the car with like a scent, or and, just memorizes all their scents or something. Uh, uh no, no, no. She she tagged them with a scent because remember she handed a, a vial thing to the lady in roses, and she was just like, "Oh, this is what I used." No, uh, that was a promotional thing that was given to the people who were going on the train, and then she just picked up on that smell, realized... No, 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 the promotional thing was the lighter. That had nothing to do with the vial thing that she had used. Uh, She she had, like, opened it up when she got on the train, and then the smell permeated throughout the train car onto all the people, and then that's what she used to, like... It was, like, some kind of pheromone thing or whatever. I guess because praying mantis. Yeah. But, um... Either way, th- after that, then she would go and find these people again and uh, slice them in half so fast that she would say, don't turn around, and then they would inevitably turn around and get sliced in half. <laughs> it was kind of insane. I mean, which will fall apart. Well, they would fall apart. Which leads to one of the most amazing, amazing doctor moments Tsubaki has. Who's, he's performing the autopsy on one of the victims, and he goes, It looks like this person was cut so fast that they didn't even realize they were cut. And how could you possibly get that from an autopsy? Because that's, that's not how... Post or uh, or perimortem wounds work like you either get the wound before you die, or you get it after you die, or or and that's how you know cause of death and whatever. But y- y- there's no possible way you can look at a body and say, oh, he was shot with a bullet before he even realized he was dead. <laughs> like that's he, he you can't like Kenshiro, you know, omai wo mo shinderu or whatever. You can't just do that. With an autopsy, that's not how <laughs> that's not how autopsies work. 
Oh, man. But apparently Suvaki is such a, an amazing doctor. Like, he's a fantastic doctor. Maybe uh, he's got that one, like, ability from, like, that TV show, iZombie, where she just eats a part of the brain, and then she gets, like, their last couple of memories. <sighs> you know, I watched the first, like, two seasons of that show. I, don't I know didn't what to watch f- it at all. I just saw commercials for it. I watched it. Uh, I don't know what to feel about that show, but that show, good. but, but we're, we know whatever. We'll talk. We'll talk about that show some other time. You know, on our own. Uh, so he has to go. Uh, but the twist of this of this of this grongi is our friend, our good translator friend Sakurako-san was on that train car. So what do we got to do? Kill the mantis before the mantis kills Sakurako-san. Super tense. Mm. Mem- Memoru friend. Mamoru. Got a got a, got a Mamoru. Yeah. Got a Tatakai for our Nakama. Yeah. Oh, oh I can't wait till you're sick of a word Tatakai. <laughs> <laughs> got a Tatakai. I'll never get sick of that word. Uh, no, no, you're gonna get sick when we get to one common writer. <laughs> Which one? Ryuki. Oh man. Get a Tatakai. Oh, I. I'll never get sick of it because um no no the problem the problem is is that that is 50 that no, that is clo- 50 close to 60% of one character's entire dialogue for the entire show. Perfect. He's my favorite <laughs> character already. Uh no, I'll never get tired of that word because uh when I watched the Gundam 00 movie, I watched it uh with with fan subtitles and the fan subtitles at the beginning of the Gundam Double O movie, they had. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. This is gonna have to be an off-screen discussion. We got, we gotta go along with commentary. We gotta go along with the thing that's in the title. <laughs> but I really like Gundam no. Double O. Yeah. But okay, 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 okay. But uh, all right, so we're, we gotta. Fo- so so uh, obviously, Godai gets to the praying mantis before she can get to Sakuraka-san, uh, and they start fighting. But Goda is having issues with his uh with his rider powers. Like his electricity is er, electricity is coursing over his his belt and it's wonking out and his power. He's kind of he's he he's got like he's got some energy problems going on. He's his readings are fluctuating, and then because he's not in sync with them, it just he just can't do things. Yep. Uh, and then uh, our our good friend the Goram, the giant flying beetle that the the horse armor that merges with his motorcycle tries to, tries to come and help him, but because of his wonky connection to his belt, it uh, just turns to stone after melding with his bike and then falls apart. Yeah, because that's how that works. Uh, but he gets a he gets a few few good hits in on the mantis, uh, making her retreat. So so we have to come come and have a, a rematch later as as he's oh this is where he goes into the room and just like he walks up to the head of R and D at the police and goes hey things are happening do you have a place that I can do the thing that I talked to you about and she goes oh yeah I got a place and then they go to an empty room behind a blast behind a, some blast doors and like super thick glass. And he's like, I'm gonna do things now. Yeah, uh, and then she, uh, what was it, ties him to an electric chair and just does the thing? No, I thought he just went in there to practice. I didn't... No, no. I, su- I think I would remember seeing him being tied to an electric chair. Just saying. I don't know, that was what I always got. Like, she just shot lightning at him somehow with her magic science lightning. I just assumed that they, he wanted a secluded room so that he could practice getting used to the energy. I don't know, whatever. Either way, he does a thing, and now he can harness the electrical powers. Because, as it turns out, when uh, Tsubaki did all the things, including using a defibrillator to, to try and revive Godai, the electricity uh, coursed through his body into the, the crystal, the Amadam is what it's called, in his rider belt. And it was able to take that energy... And incorporated into itself. Now, because the original Kuga uh, didn't have, there was no electricity. Like he never got struck by lightning or anything crazy like that. I mean, regard- regardless of all the the super advanced ancient Aztec bullshit that they had to do to make a rider belt and 
make go ram and all this shit. It stood apparently they didn't have electricity, so whatever. Absolutely zero percent electricity. Uh as we all know, white people invented electricity. Yes. Yes, super white people. Um so now Kuga has access to forms that he never had in the past, two thousand years ago. Uh these are these are officially called the rising forms. Rising X being a rising X form being, you know, the name for the form in its golden form is is also what it's called like rising titan rising pegasus rising dragon rising mighty so he turns into rising titan form and rising titan is even strong defensor than than previous titan form where before he he had trouble fight fighting off the the blades of the praying mantis creature but now he's got big sword extra big sword yeah, his sword is now level two. His sword is now level two, uh, and it was stole. <laughs> Remember when he stole it from the monster? Like it snapped in half, and no, he yeah, picked yeah, it yeah. up, and it became his sword. This, look at me. This is my sword now. And then he uses that to kill the monster. Uh, and then, uh, th- then, then we get into basically him developing all of his rising form parts. Uh, the next episode we see him get rising pegasus against a, a bird creature, but, uh, nothing really interesting happens that episode. It literally starts with rising pegasus form shoots bird, or no, 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 that's the end, no, never mind, that's the no, end. No, no, in the beginning, is, it is, uh, rising pegasus shoots the bird, but at the same time he shot one of his arrow quills through Godai's arm, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he got shot in the wing, so he just rips off his wing. To like not die, so the energy of the of the rising Pegasus blast, and then the next didn't time transfer. See, and then next time we see Bird Grongi, he's just casually sitting in a lounge reading a book, and they're like, "Hey man, are you gonna make your are you gonna make your quota?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, I'm just waiting for my wing to come back." As he's casually reading like 36 volumes of fucking textbooks, <laughs> he's reading a Song of Ice and Fire or some <laughs> shit, I guess. <laughs> he's, uh, and- he's reading it like five times. <laughs> And Godai, well, he had an, a hole in his arm, and now he just doesn't, because that's how Kuga powers work. And people are actually kind of like, dude, you had a hole in your arm, and it's just it's just gone now? And Godai's like, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Like, he doesn't even give it a second thought. Like, like, dude, you just, you just, what? I want the episode where, like, Godai just kind of starts, like, he goes... Guys, I know I've been saying that everything's fine, but in all honesty, I don't even know anymore. Like, I'm just trying to play and act. Like, I'm just trying to act like I'm like I'm fine, just so you guys don't worry. But clearly, you guys are still worried, and I- I'm worried. And then no, it's all and then we have the episode you. where it's like, go die, no matter no matter what, we'll always have faith in you. We just worry for you because we're your friends. But with the power of friendship, you can persevere through anything. No, and then it's, he all get, di- then, it's all that. Then, then he gets then he gets his ultimate cosmic states form, and then wins the day. No, no, no. It's all it's all die Jobu. And besides, we already had the episode where they all believed in him. Remember when he died, and literally everyone said, "Oh, he died. Don't worry, he'll be back. He's never betrayed our expectations." Something's before. happened to go. Oh, uh, he'll be all right. But he's dead. No, he'll be all right. <laughs> he'll be perfectly fine. He'll get up in a few days. And then he was. Up he'll, later. Just, he'll just. He's just gonna sleep it off for now. <laughs> That's basically what happened. He just slept off the deaths. Ancient Aztec script says, "Don't worry, he'll sleep it off." <laughs> <laughs> just please don't bother him. It might. <laughs> As they extra bothered the shit out of him. But hey, you got some cool new powers out of it. So yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, so the end of the episode, Birdman comes back. Godai got to do the thing, turns into rising Pegasus form, uh, and he shoots the bird so hard it explodes like ten times in midair. Yes, and this is like a really large explosion. Like, uh, it wasn't just an explosion, this was literally ten explosions. It exploded, and then there was more explosions afterwards. But wh- whatever, the... If this guy had blown up not over a river, there would have been extensive damage to the city. And oh no, he didn't blow up over a river, he just blew up in the sky. Well, his, he blew up in the sky over a river. Was it over a river? Yes, it was. Uh, yes. I guess. Yes, it was. Mm. Uh, but That's anyway, not the important part. Yeah, the important. Well, the important part is that it was a rather large explosion, like, nonetheless. Oh, absolutely. That's the important part. Oh, man. Uh, yes, so many explosions. Ah, uh, yes, now, uh, 
Uh, it's right around this time. We also get uh, the new opening, the the really cool uh, n- new opening with Ichijo sitting in the chair, yeah, and Sakuraka-san against the wind, <laughs> and uh, and uh, we get to see you know him posing in his new rising forms, and it's super dope. Uh, the new opening is is super dope. Uh, I mean, same same song, just different oh, yeah. different. Uh, visuals, yeah, yeah. The it's the same song, which is good because we both like the song. It's, it's super cool. By the way, have you been noticing that uh, in in the opening that they have like snippets from whatever his current like case is? Yep. Yeah, that's cool. It's really cool. Um, and yeah, uh, this is uh, this is the pool episode with. with <laughs> With with our or with our new uh, what, what what even the hell was she, our new our new Grongi enemy? What, what was she? Uh, she was. Shit, man! What the fuck? She had ice powers and she used a whip. Yeah, uh, she she wasn't anything. But the important part is that. We... <laughs> How do we even lead into this? Like the for, for no no we'll, we'll start from the beginning. It op- it opens up. People are ha- people are. We get this opening scene of these guys doing break dancing. Oh, the a break. Grong, a grong, the grongi that in this particular episode uh, walks up to uh, their stereo <laughs> and changes boombox. changes the song to classical. And then they get really mad, and when they try to confront her about it, she just murders them. And then, and then we move on to like everybody's enjoying their can, can time. I, can every- I just say real fast that I really enjoyed the slow motion break dancing? It was really funny. But go on. Uh, then we get to they go like we get the a bunch of the cast having a day off at the beach. Uh, it wasn't the beach; it was a water park. Water park. Yeah, my bad. Water park. Uh, it's it's Godai's sister, her coworker, uh the the girl who likes Godai and the owner of the the owner of the restaurant that they all frequent slash work at. <laughs> and they all just work at sometimes. The, well they all work at it eventually, except for the except for the coworker. Uh and they're they're enjoying their time and then we get then we get a a, a little moment where uh, we find out that Godai's sister's coworker is is pregnant, and she's like, "Oh, I'm kind of, kind of excited, kind of nervous about having this baby." And then uh, they're like, "Well, f- for for now, you look fine in that swimsuit, whatever." And then they they go on with their day, and as they're leaving, we see uh, we see fish grongi showing up to uh showing up to the water park as they're leaving and then when they all get home they they go they like, turn on the tv and on the news they say what's that a bunch of people died at this fucking water park and then they're like that's the water park we were at oh man we could have died too and then so, and then there's there's little like pregnant baby coming into the world it like drama and she says, "Like, oh man, will the will the world still be like dangerous when my baby comes into this world?" Which the answer is yes, always a hundred percent. You live in the Tokusatsu w- dimension. There is literally nonstop infinite monster attacks everywhere, all at once. Your baby is going to die if it doesn't become its own <laughs> hero. <laughs> uh, and then, and then we go on to. Uh, and then we go on to like, uh, it's a we have to pep up the pregnant or we have to give a pep talk to the pregnant lady, uh, whatever. And then she's she's just like, well, I guess I guess the world sucks, and I'm just gonna make the best of it with my baby. And then we get then the police are investigating are investigating the crime scene of like another pool that was attacked, uh, and this time. Uh, Ichijo is like walking through the uh, building where, or the hotel where the pool is at, and he sees this girl playing the piano, and he's like he listens to her for a second. He gets kind of lost in the music, uh, and then 
then he gets then he gets snapped back to reality and they say come on the scene's over here and i told i looked at scott and i said why the fuck would the police let her be there <laughs> she has like they were it's literally a crime scene like the people were murdered at this pool why are they letting her just sit there and play the piano like right next to the pool that is super suspicious as fuck Nah, nah, you're wrong. Perfectly normal okay. for someone to play the uh, piano next to dead people. And then they're talking about it, and they go like, "Man, th- like this time, like a p- bunch of people are dying at are are dying at uh, pools and stuff and water." And then Ichijo just has this spur moment of fucking sheer common sense, and he runs over to the piano where the girl was playing, and she's not there anymore, and the fucking piano keys are covered in water, and he goes what and they go and then all of a sudden he goes they're like we gotta we gotta find out where like where like where all these targetings are because it seems it, like they're all water places but it seems kind of random and then he goes go over the list oh yeah and go, then he, godai, godai is there too by the way godai shows up and he goes and then, and then, he go, and then ichijo's like go over the list and then he's like fucking this this place this place this place D- dolphin and, park uh, something that starts with an L, something that starts with an L. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then he goes, "Oh my God, Chopin's Revolution!" And then they're like, "They're like, what? The monster is using Chopin's Revolution to target people." And he goes, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, if you just take this note at this er at this whatever the, thing, the, the scale, the do re mi scale. Yeah, yeah, if you take if you take like using this scale, this note." Blah blah blah. This is how many people she has to kill. This is the place she has to go, or this is the the play the the idea. Like this is like they don't know exactly the place, but you guys get the idea. She's using music to determine her attack location. And then Godai says, "Oh, the next note is hold on, soul." Hold on, hold on, hold on. And no, well, before before they just shout out uh, the, the name of the song. Ishijo is just playing it on the piano, and his coworker is like. She, Chopin, over the phone, and then over the phone, and his coworkers like Chopin's Revolution, and then Godai says, "Oh, this is Chopin's Revolution." So the next note is this, and it's like me and Scott are like, "Does everybody just know it's Chopin's Revolution? Are we just uncultured fucks or something?" Definitely uncultured. Uh, I know. I mean, I've I've probably heard that melody before and just completely forgotten about it. I never knew what it was called. Apparently, it's Chopin's Revolution. Uh. Yeah, and uh, Ichijo and Godai and his partner all just knew it off the top of their heads. Enough to enough for Godai to be able to play. Is that one of his 2000 skills that we just never talk about? Like the ability to just play the piano off the top of his head? Uh I don't I want to think the ability to play piano, but I would definitely go with the ability to distinguish music. <laughs> That's and, definitely and a skill. know what it is. Uh, but long story short, what, so what the police decide to do is close down all those pools that start with that note, uh, but the Grongi has, gets some kind of workaround somehow? Yeah, it can, you, like, they close, no, it, I don't think they close down the water parks, I think they're just running to the water parks, and because of, uh, because of, like, it, they're just they're just checking water par- or like water parks or pools and s- like it just so happens that like I don't know some of them are like aren't open or like just don't have any people and because like because of this like severe limitation of her of her selection she has to like she's like oh well guys are we gonna include beaches on the search or on the search too because of like local beach names and the like yeah, let's do that. And then, sure enough, she shows up at a beach because every other place she goes to is empty. Yeah, because they they shut down all those pools. Uh, but yeah, so Godai meets her on the beach, uh, and he's fighting her, and he unlocks his rising dragon form, and then he chucks that bitch into the ocean where she explodes a huge explosion out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, but this time, this time it's kind of it's kind of uh, underwater. It's underwater, so it's it's less effective. Or it's, like, not as big as the other explosion. Yeah, but uh, at this point, uh, they're realizing that these new rising forms are powerful, but the energy output is exponentially more powerful. And uh, at this, up to this point, Godai has not unlocked rising mighty form. 
uh, just Titan, Pegasus, and Dragon form. I think it's just kind of he chose not to. No, no, he, he, d- it, he didn't. It's not like he had to have like an arc where he was like had to try to unlock it. He just like he just walks up to Ichijo and goes, "I'm gonna use Rising Mighty form," and then he just does r- Rising Mighty form. Well, either way, he just hasn't used it at this point for whatever. Just because he just decided he has, he's not going to use it yet. I and, think he kind of. I think he kind of knew the like the it the. The inherent risk of using rising mighty form. Yeah, even and if he even if he didn't at this point, uh, he gets he goes to have a checkup with Subaki, and Subaki's just like, you know, when I said those beery beeries were caused by my defibrillator, it was a joke. I guess it wasn't a joke uh, because the uh, the this crystal thing in your gut is uh, churning out electricity like fucking like fucking everywhere, and it's uh, uh it's it's ch- it's charging you up through your nervous system. Uh, and, um, if you use your, your kick in your, in your red form, which is, because in the show they almost never use the official name. So they just say the red form, the green form, the blue form, the purple form, etc. And, and the golden red form, etc. He's like, if you use your golden red form, a whole bunch of energy will be stored in your right leg. Because early on in the show, when they said that the rider belt was changing Godai's physiology... It was saying it was uh, particularly enhancing the muscles in his right leg for you know, his rider kick. So, uh, so they say when, if you go into your golden red form, there's going to be a whole bunch of power in your right leg. So we just started joking that like so it'll be so muscly powerful it'll just rip he'll through have, his pants. He'll, he'll his his fucking it'll alter his foot so much that he'll just get super swole and then he just can't wear all his pants are gonna have to be missing the right leg just all of them uh and pe- people are kind of just uh, uh honestly a little hesitant to, uh, hesitant about it because uh he's he's just getting exponentially stronger um <laughs> man nobody nobody it's like up until now Nobody's really stopped to think like how like how the belt's changing and affecting Godai all that much other than oh wow he did this amazing thing and then he did this amazing thing and then every nobody stops to think like wait a minute there's too many amazing things going on when do we go from amazing to concerning <laughs> Apparently, recently, as uh, as as these giant explosions, and even then, they just kind of bat it away as like a non-issue. Well, they don't really bat it away, especially. Uh, so so now we have um, Godai fighting the uh, the wrecking ball one, the wrecking ball thing. Uh, yes. Where where they're playing where they're playing poker beforehand, the Gronk are just playing poker. Yep, like be- be- between attacks, they just he just decides to take a break, play some poker with the best best set of playing cards ever. Yeah, completely circular. I've never seen playing cards like that before. Uh, I think I have actually a long time ago though. So fucking weird. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this new Grongi, he he targets an area in Tokyo based on based on a what's it called a roulette and not a roulette is is it a roulette? Uh, yeah, he uses a roulette. A casino uh, he, roulette. Yeah, he, he uses a casino roulette, does the thing, and whatever number he gets, that's the direction that he targets people in. And he just chucks a bunch of fucking wrecking balls. I, I think I think what it is is because you know how you you spin a roulette on top of the ball going around? Like, yeah, shooting yeah, yeah. the ball around? Whatever direction the ball stops that's the direction that he's gonna do and then whatever number comes up that's how many he's gonna do maybe i don't know either way he just he he has these like little things on his knuckles that he pulls off and using his grongi powers turns them into fucking wrecking balls and he just chucks them in that direction like a rain uh and it just it just rains ball and chains on literally just rains wrecking balls and uh so the first time the first time uh godai fights him uh he's just not strong enough uh he he can't really he can't really uh hurt him um he can't get close enough with titan form because it's so slow 
and the the wrecking balls are just even too powerful for Titan form. Uh, and he can't he can't use Pegasus form because uh, he won't have the time to take the shot. He doesn't have a gun handy. Uh, Dragon form's not powerful enough, uh, so it's all up to Mighty form, uh, and he's reluctant to use the golden power because of all because of the potential, the, the inherent risk of using it. Exactly. Uh, so he gets he gets kind of wrecked, but um, so does the uh, so does the monster kind of. So they kind of back off for a while, and. Uh, and then the next time the monster appears to start attacking, Godai goes up to Ichijo and he goes, Hey, I'm going to use the golden red power. I need you to evacuate the area just in case. I need you I need you to minimize damage as much as possible. And then it's, it's a pretty tall order, but Ichijo just kind of has to agree because it has to be done. Yeah. Uh, so he gets, so he starts getting his team to start evacuating the area as Godai starts fighting the monster. Uh, Godai needs a bit of an assist here because then Ichijo shows up with his <laughs> rifle, with his <laughs> rifle, and as as Godai is about to get attacked by the monster using its ball and chain, Ichijo snipes the chain, and the bullet is strong enough to break the chain. So the monster just goes. Okay, whatever. I'll just throw another one. So he pulls the little boulder off of his knuckle. Ichijo sh- shoots it out of his hand, and then he proceeds to just fucking with 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 a rifle, just fucking fire off like like almost semi-automatic and take out every fucking every little like ball that in chain this guy has on his body. <laughs> yeah, he just. On, on this guy's knuckles, like, they're on the back of his hands, and Godai just kind of has him in, like, a, a full Nelson or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, he just has him in one of those, and each is just 10 feet away, semi-automatic rifle. Not a sniper rifle, a regular rifle. Like, yeah. a, a hunting rifle. And he's just sniping the little boulders off the back of this thing's knuckles. And I'm just like, that's, that's inhuman. That is quite literally inhuman. He's got that one thing. What's it called uh, in video games? The 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 hack. Oh oh the 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 aimbot. He's yeah, he's got aimbot. He's got a he's, he's got, got real life aimbot. Yeah, you know no 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 it's it's a uh, it's Fallout. He's got the vats the vat <laughs> system where it slows down time. And he's got the, like the the percentage chance of hitting the specific thing except for EG Joe's one hundred percent every time. <laughs> uh. uh. So so he successfully stops him from having his balls and chains. Uh, he just shoots off all his balls. So <laughs> so now so now I guess he has to wait for them to regrow because he has no weapon. So Godai like Godai and him like fall off the building because because this is how they do it. Remember they fall off the building. Yeah. And he rams him with the go ram on his on his motorcycle into like a like an industrial district or something yeah and so then this is where godai gets off and activates the golden power for his for his mighty form his red form and it gets this like this little anklet on his right leg uh and and the golden trim and the and and the nice things and he he starts running for his rider kick he's got his foot on fire and it's all it's all slow motion and the monster's like oh i'm gonna tank it like i tanked your last finishing move because it didn't kill me uh right it was the 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 uh rising calamity titan and it just didn't kill him yeah he's it like he's like what's this gonna do exactly so godai godai does his rider kick and uh a three thousand meter radius explosion happens he has he has systematically almost or not so he has coincidentally almost raised at least nine million square kilometers of city that's not that's, that's not how that math works it, it, it was it was like 26 no 18 million it was 18 million it, no 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 because no, because uh it's it, not a million kilometers because that's not how kilometers works 3,000 meters is like 3 kilometers, so there's oh, no right. way... No, oh, yeah, my bad. I got my units of measure mixed up. My bad. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. 3,000 meters is only 3 kilometers. So, like, 
Three three kil- a three kilometer radius. Uh, I was like, it was square. Like, it was eighteen thousand, eighteen thousand kilometers square. Yeah, yeah, it was some crazy shit like that. Uh, but it, the, the but the map the map zoomed out, and you get you get to you get to visually see it, and not just take our word for it. Yeah, you get to uh, see a huge explosion, and they and, say a three thousand meter radius explosion happened. Oh, but by the way, they're state they're stating all these facts on the next episode where they're like, this much of the city was destroyed. This is the this is how much damage was done. We still don't know how many how many uh casualties casualties there are. We're we're going to be uh, we're going to be fixing this for a long time and it's going to cost a lot of money. And then go it camera cuts to Godai and his sister and his sister's like, "Uh, do you want to talk about it?" And he goes, "No, I'm fine." <laughs> I mean, oh man, Goda, Goda does feel bad about it. Like, oh, he but this, like he doesn't want to talk about it though. <laughs> nah, man, he doesn't want to talk about it. You can't fault a man. He tells everybody that he's fine. It's okay. There, were, he knew about the he knew about the underlying risk of his kick. Yeah, that's why he told Ichijo to evacuate the area. <laughs> you know, all three thousand meters of it, or whatever. All three thousand meter radius of it. Yeah, but uh, either way, uh, Kuga is now considered super dangerous. Uh, remember, it doesn't matter how many successes you have; people only focus on your fuck ups. Uh, so he fucked up pretty bad. Yeah, uh, and uh, when 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 the police who had been supporting Kuga up until now are asked "What the fuck?" by people, they're like, "We didn't know. This is Kuga's fault." Oh, oh, extra throw him under the bus. Extra, yeah. extra took him because. Well, I mean, it it it, it is his fault. I mean, I mean, yes, I know it makes sense. I'm not, I'm not saying it, they shouldn't have thrown him under the bus, or or it doesn't make sense for them to. I'm just saying they did in fact take him, put him in the middle of the road, and tell the bus to just gun it. Yeah, uh, like man. like that's extra what happened. Uh, I funnily enough, this is literally. Right before Kuga does his rising mighty kick and causes all that damage, the police commissioner is talking to his research and development team about the about a new motorcycle that they want to give to Kuga, the BTCS. Yes. They were literally like, oh, look, we made a super nice thing for Kuga. Remember that time he basically stole our super prototype? Well, now we're just going to... Oh, excuse me. Now we're just going to give him a super prototype. Yeah. And then he causes g- 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 billions of, of, of yen in, in property damage or whatever. And they're just like, oh, I guess we gotta kind of... So now, now we're... Now the, ne- the next Rongi up for the... Uh, for the Geiru is uh, fucking Captain Grasshopper. And he's like, he's like, don't worry guys. I'll complete this Gegeru, and this will be the final Gegeru, and we'll be done. And they, like, I'll, like, cause fucking Kuga can't beat me. My motorcycle skills are too rad. And then, uh, so he goes about, uh, attacking people, uh, specifically people, other people on motorcycles, and he is killing them by hitting them with his motorcycle. By punching them in the face with his front wheel. Yes. Uh, apparently he also knows Ripple because. He can break someone's leg by hitting them in the face with a fucking motorcycle. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, this Grongi is super dope. Uh, he's a re- he's also a call a-, a very obvious callback to the first common rider, common rider Ichigo, uh, because he's got the red scarf. Yeah, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, and so, fucking, and he's a grasshopper. Yeah. Uh, so they're like. Now everybody, like, now, like, on the Kuga side of things, we're dealing with the drama of, like, the... Pe- people are kind of people are kind of mad that he did the thing, even though he kind of had to. And it's, like, it's that weird, it's that weird, stupid double standard of, like, yes, we understand that, like, we understand that you're exterminating the monsters, but why'd you have to kill so many people to do it, even though, like... The monster, like they had to defeat the monster, because if not, casualties were just gonna pile up. Just so happened that a fucking billion other people died at the same time, like because he kicked a monster in the face really hard. Yes, uh, 
then we get like uh uh whatchamacallit they're they're like or fucking Godai is trying to fight the gra- the grasshopper his motorcycle isn't rad enough to do it uh and it overheats the super prototype just overheats yeah and then the grasshopper is like <laughs> fucking nerd and then dries off yeah, uh, he so, says, you'll be the last one I take care of because obviously I don't have to worry about you and then he fucking drives off. Uh, and then we're like... Then he's like... Then he walks up to Ichijo and says, Hey man, what about that uh, that new like Mark II uh, bike that you, were ta- that you were talking about? And he goes, oh yeah, the BTCS? And he goes, here, let me, let me make a call. And then he goes, they're like, Ichijo... You can't give him the bike. And he goes, Ah, oh, fuck. And then... And then, uh, fucking... Like, when he hangs up the phone, Godai's like, Let me guess, they're not gonna give me the bike? And he goes, Yep. And he goes, Because because I rider kicked... I rider kicked an entire fucking city in... Out of existence? And he goes, Yep. Then he goes, Fuck. And then, uh... So then they're like, Well, I guess... I guess we gotta just deal with it. And then uh, they're coming up with, like, all sorts of plans and alternate plans. And, like, fuck it. Ichijo, like, walks into his office and they're like, yo, they're like, what? Like, you know, you like, they're all like, oh, hey, uh, we know that the, we know that the general public and the newspapers are saying that Kuga is a fucking, a uh, fucking monster. But don't worry, we still believe in Kuga. And then he goes, Nina! Guys, I have a plan, and then there, I need all of you. Otherwise, this plan won't work. Uh, and then they, uh, then they start. He starts formulating this plan. Says, "You are gonna like, we're gonna use this entire area. Set up a trap for the. Set up traps and decoys for this fucking monster. Fucking, we're gonna put you, you, and you on a fucking bike as decoys. You guys are gonna like." We're gonna split up into three squads. Each squad's gonna take a different, fu- or is gonna handle a different decoy. You are gonna h- handle the rifle. You are gonna fucking go off and like go pick up Godai and blah blah blah. And then they fucking, uh, and then fucking Godai's just driving his bike down down the ho- or down the street, going like, man, this sucks. Like I was like, I don't know if I have. I was like, my fucking rad motorcycle skills clearly aren't fucking smoking six dollar enough to beat this guy and then when he's done or then when he's moping around fucking Ichijo's partner partner shows up and goes you're Godai and he goes yeah get in and then he goes what and he goes yeah we're gonna be or we're gonna fucking take like we got a plan to take care of this guy and then so then he Godai's riding with this guy and then he get like gets a call from like the uh, fucking uh, di- directory uh, police officer who works like the fucking street monitoring whatever. Yeah. And she goes, she goes, don't worry, I'm here to support you too. And then, so and then while they're driving, they have this nice pleasant conversation. He or Godai has this nice pleasant conversation with Ichijo's partner. He goes, so you're you're really Kuga, huh? And he goes, yep. And he goes. You do the you do the whole getting like you do the whole fucking get to the thing and he goes yeah it's because of because of this belt blah 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 and then, and then he's like cool 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 and then they get to the first or they get to the first decoy that's being targeted by a gra- or grasshopper son uh fucking Godai goes picks up the the decoy bike which is just another exact same Mark One bike. Fucking drives off. They fight the fights the grasshopper. Fucking bike overheats again. Yeah, and he's bike like, ain't cool enough. Yeah. Uh, then he's like, no. And so the while this is so while this is happening, uh, basically the top brass have sent uh, Canto police. Yeah, yeah. The can the Canto police to the research and development team and to- said, hey, we need you to give us the BTCS. And Enokita, our our head of research and development, she's just like. Oh, 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 you're here for that. Oh, I lost it. No, 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 no. I really wish she said that, though. I really wish she fucking said that. Oh, I lost it. They go, we're here for the, we're here for the BTSC. 
Without saying a word or even acknowledging their existence, she turns back around in the chair and just sandbags them super hard. And then she, they're like, we are on orders from the fu- from the fucking uh, super from the top board. Ass. Yeah, from the from the board of directors. And then she turns back around and goes, fine. And I then it, then then fucking go dies fucking, fucking grasshopper song. Uh, gets fucking super super Wrecked. wrecked again. Uh, and uh, the grasshop- grasshopper rides off, and then they're like, and then like Ichijo's partner is like, "Oh man, I got to see Kuga transform. That was cool." And then, and then he calls uh and then they're like, they go about their day and like waiting for the grasshopper to show up. Grasshopper literally runs over a person out of existence like (laughs) this person hides in a shack and then he drives the motorcycle through the shack and the person just ceases to be (laughs) hey man (laughs) Gagaru doesn't need a body (laughs) just needs a victim (laughs) rule master said it counted and then checked it off on his abacus rule master shows up says hey man yeah, I, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Are you like just just don't don't get don't let your guard down around Kuga. And then he goes Kuga and his fucking C tier right and his C tier motorcycle riding skills, whatever. And then uh, eventually he falls or he gets caught caught up in the second decoy that they set up. And I. I understand what you were saying about the bullets, but it doesn't change the fact that the plan was this guy has the gun. This guy specifically, only this guy. So why do why does why do we have to wait for them to give the bullets to him? Him. He is the only guy in this plan that needs the bullets. It's not like they go, "Oh, we need to put the bullets wherever." They, they're going to get like this guy is the only guy with the gun. He should not have the plan. bullet. He should have the bullets already. He should have the bullets already. Yeah, anyway, a, so uh, not every plan is perfect. So they they set up a blockade. They're start they're starting to uh, fire off at him. Oh, and they're like, hold on, you know what we forgot? What? That time Godai shot at him with rising Pegasus, and it just that's what that's what we're getting. That's what we're getting. Oh, was it this time? Yes. Oh. Uh, they're like, I'm fucking tripping. That, that was the episode I was half asleep. Yeah. Uh, so they're uh, fucking. They're fucking. They have a blockade set up. Uh, they he hits he hits the decoy on the motorcycle. Super hard murders him. Uh, then they're like, "Oh, fire!" And then he's like, "Whatever, your guys' fucking scrub ass guns don't work." And then they shoot his motorcycle, and he goes, "Motherfucker shot my motorcycle!" And then he just decides to drive off for whatever reason. Uh, well, you can't kill them. They're not part of his. And then go- Godai catches up. Or Godai catches up to him, and then the guy's like, "What? Oh man, you came here for another match? Oh man, I can't wait to embarrass you again!" And then Godai gets on gets on Goran, turns into Pegasus form, sh- shoots at him like twice, and the guy dodges it. Uh, and then he's like, "No!" Or the guy drives away, and he's like, "Fuck, I fucked up again!" And then he, then they're like. What are we gonna do now? And then Ichijo's like, "Guys, it's time for step two, because apparently, off to the side, when Kanto guys were about to take the bike, Ichijo stops them, convinces them to let him have the bike so that he can give to Kuga, and then brings the bike to Kuga." And all and while this is happening, our Tokyo Police Commissioner went to directly to the board of directors. And is trying to convince them to to not see Kuga as an enemy because originally the uh, the police commissioner Ichijo's boss. Uh, no, well, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He, I wouldn't call it trying because he walked in and knew he was going to succeed. Like he, in his heart of hearts, he he walks up to all the other guys and goes, "Fucking, you guys know that this shit is out of control. We don't know what we're doing." Nobody knows how to do any of this. The only saving grace we have right now is Kuga, and you guys want, uh, and you guys want to fucking, and you guys want to like, oh, because of some bad press, 
not give him the bike and thus now we or and because we didn't or and you guys know that because we don't give him the bike he's going to he's going to be doing his job at a lesser capacity and thus we're going to have more victims so remember why you're a police and then he walks out the room fucking enough said to, probably didn't even have to listen to them overturn the decision to give him the bike just fucking walked out the room like a boss it was great yeah it was super cool especially now because originally the police commissioner had been distrusting of kuga mainly because no he, no it, the 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 a conversation he has with ichijo the implication is that he's he agrees with ichijo that kuga is a good guy and is trying his best but what he is upholding the order of the high of the higher uh, people. I, well, either way, Goda gets this new super rad Mark II uh, beat chaser BTCS blah blah blah. Got to sell the toys. Yeah. Um, he gets his new super rad motorcycle. And now we got to have a, another another rematch. Yes, and then this time Goda wins wins the race. He wins the race by like a lot. Yes, <laughs> like he nitro boosts, and the and the grasshopper guy is super upset about it. Extra butt hurt. Yeah, uh, co- conveniently he drives out like he chased like he races the grasshopper to the middle of nowhere, and then he gets off his bike, waits for the grasshopper. The grasshopper is charging him with the bike, and then he just rising mighty form. Rider kicks fucking grasshopper. And then you get to see the explosion as it raises and like a nearly empty. You are completely plot of land. leaving out the part where they're fighting on like the beach, and they do the the like the air the air cross uh, tackle attack thing. You know what I'm talking? You remember? Oh, I, I glossed over it. I didn't. It didn't really ma- didn't really mean too much to me. Definitely means something to me. It was it was an extremely amazing like like imagine just. Common rider on a motorcycle if fighting see, a if, monster if, on a motorcycle. If you if you have seen a like if, like granted, I understand you've seen two common rider series, but once you once you watch more of them, it's they literally do the exact same type of fight across every common rider, where they ju- where they're just charging at each other with motorcycles, trying to fight each other on top of motorcycles. Okay, but this one was super cool. Okay, especially especially when they almost switched bikes for two seconds. Yeah, Goat, I just decided not to get on the other guy's bike. It would have been cool. It would have been super cool, but uh, no, he just decides to uh, to not. Yeah. Uh, and then he rising mighty kicks him into oblivion. Yeah, uh, along with the surrounding farmlands. Uh, then, then, then this is when we get into. Uh, yeah, this is when you woke up again, and then and we- now now we're now we're on the, the porcupine. Yes. All right, so. Uh, we start. We start. We basically start this episode. This is this is actually a really intense set of episodes because uh, uh, we start. We start out uh, this kid surrounded by his family in a hospital, uh, basically freaking the fuck out. Uh, so we're sort of we're sort of having like a of the ring style uh, where someone told them they were gonna die in X amount of days, which is four, and uh, his other friends had already died through whatever means, and. He's freaking out, and his parents are and his sister are just like, no, 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 this isn't real. It's not gonna happen. Blah 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 blah. And uh, they're just like, and he's he's trying to like he's trying to calm down, but like it's not working. And all of a sudden, he starts bleeding from the nose, and he's everyone starts freaking out like, oh my god. And then he dies, uh, and and everyone's just crying out in anguish, and Ichijo's walking through the hospital, and he's just like. Mm, it's, it's it's hitting him hard because like this kid is just mm. uh and then i can only think that the difference between this and like the entire other like the entire everything of the show before this is because it's happening to middle schoolers or some bullshit it yeah that's exactly it that is the exact the exact same exact thing um but long story short this this porcupine grongi is uh piercing the students with like uh his porcupine needles direct directly into their brains so precisely that somehow that it doesn't kill them for four days like i don't i don't remember the exact reasoning behind it i think 
I don't know. Like, they, they, I don't even remember them saying that they're like he's like his his needle is necessarily in their body. I think it's no, no. Because remember, the rule master was like, oh. He has to reach his quota. I just, I just assumed that maybe there, there was a poison on his needles or something. No, because remember Tsubaki's doing the autopsy and he pulls the needle out of the kid's brain. Oh, that's the part that I wasn't paying attention to then. Mm, yeah, he definitely pulled the needle directly out of his brain. He's just like, it was in there so surgically, it's fucking insane. How did this not show up on like MRIs and shit? So Tsubaki theorized that it was like some kind of... Uh, a chemical in the body that then converged into a needle in their brain or some crazy shit like that um because uh, the, the rule master was just like oh he has to meet his quota uh and he's only got four more days and if he hits someone with a needle now he'll die just so he was like this guy was like one off from completing his gig he's like one off yeah the only the only uh quote unquote saving grace of this is uh before one of the needles uh, claimed a vic- one of the victims, uh, the kid committed suicide, which does not count for the Gageru because it uh, he didn't die due to the thing that was supposed to kill him. Uh, which is why in other situations I had to explain to Alan like why they couldn't just crash a train and murder all the people on it. That's not how the Gageru works. There are rules and limitations. And this one is he has to hit the kid with the needle and then have them die in four days so um uh this this one actually uh delights in tormenting his victims and 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 he by telling them you're going to die in four days by he can teleport i didn't know porcupines could teleport but i guess porcupines could teleport yeah yeah that's his special ability uh he could just snap his fingers and teleport by quite literally snaps his fingers and teleports Maybe he's just a maybe he's just a speed type, and every time he turns a corner, he just really fastly like moves around another corner or something. Uh, or, or maybe you you were onto something with the hallucinations. Yeah, because they they do a weird camera thing where they put on a filter, like when they sh- like when people are trying to chase him, he when he turns corners and he like he snaps his fingers, and then a filter shows up on the camera. And like that looks at him, and then when somebody like looks down at that same like down that same hallway, he's just not there. And it's like that's what made me go like jump to illusions. And then like, but I just kind of figured that maybe he's fast because if he did have illusion powers, I don't understand why he wouldn't just use it in the fight against Kuga. Because like uh, uh, from what I could tell, like. Like, you know, go to punch him, and then it's an illusion, ah! And then, but no, like, he's probably just running around really fast. Gotta go fast? Gotta go fast. I guess, I guess... <laughs> no, you know what? He's not the a porcupine. The blue, too! <laughs> uh, you know what? He's not a porcupine. He's a hedgehog. That's it. He's a hedgehog. He was Sonic. Oh, my God! Fuck, he was Sonic the whole time. <laughs> God damn Why is Sonic in my Kuga? <laughs> I don't know. God damn it. Shit, how did we not see it? You know what? I, I have an excuse. I was half dead. <laughs> uh, uh, but that, that, now we're getting to, like, fucking news. Uh, like, news. Uh, fucking. Yeah, yeah go, go to, go to his, uh, News uh, channels ha- are reporting on fucking, like, the list. The going, like, literally going, let's remind you guys of all of, the, the, of all the people that have died in this single groggy occasion for mi- the mysterious circumstance bullshit and then they just start going over the victim list of this current investigation and then go go to is seeing it and he's like he he's uh, he is, he's getting he is turned. mad he is mad he is, uh, apparently all the 1 million people that have died before this mean nothing Especially those fourteen hundred people from our hero number thirty five. Yes, yeah, uh, like like he was talking about it, and he well, was just let, like, Ugh. wait, wait, let's not forget what should have hit him harder than this: the amount of casualties that he directly caused by rider kicking that fucking motherfucker out of existence. You're right, but no, no, this no, be, the, these are middle school students. They're, wait, wait. Their but, value is slightly more to Godai than everybody else in existence. I'd like to point. I'd like to point out that that it's it, they're being uh, fucked with so much that one of them committed suicide. 
This is a little bit different. Because in previous Gronky occasions, it was just, boom, I kill you, one and done. Like, I follow a pattern, yeah, but it's like I want it done. This one is specifically taunting them, specifically stalking them, specifically targeting them, specifically agitating them and their and their families. Like, this one kid's family takes him to, like, out of the city or whatever the fuck. Where they, he takes, they take him far away to hide in, like, their summer beach house. And the dad has, like, a shotgun. Like, a shotgun's gonna do anything to a grongi these days. Gotta have the super smoke bullets, Mark Five, where they, where they, no, Mark Four, where they heal for negative damage. <laughs> <laughs> where they cause zombie status See, and, they, they, and they, they heal. What them. They, no, what they need to do is they need to invest on uh, Gronky healthcare because once they start trying to help the Gronky, that's when that's when technology, that's when it's all the research is just gonna go backwards and hurt them. Like actual healthcare? No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so so I, I I always got the feeling that it's because this Grongi was taunting the, his victims. He was he he specifically said he takes it like their suffering gave him enjoyment. Like it was all of that that decides to get Godai super pissed off. But uh, then again, like he doesn't he doesn't really have any like interactions with that Grongi or like doesn't get no, they no, don't get he, any messages saying like oh ha ha I love tormenting these yeah, no kids. no he does he does because he talks to the kid that he took th- that, the, that his parents took to the summer home and they save him remember no but the, the thing is Godai Go- 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 is getting super pissed before this like no, super... no, no no he's getting pissed after this no he's, he's just this is no this is this scene that you're talking about is literally right before he beats it bloody literally right before like it's literal. It's basically right before. Like the kid, the kid said, All "Oh, I'm I looked him in the eyes." That Godai has a fucked up sense of value. Just saying. Yeah. Okay. Either way, this is the thing that makes Godai snap. Like he not only does he like beat the sh- the living shit out of this Gronky. Like he is beating him so hard, he is pulverizing his face into pavement and and, and police cars. Like he is. Beating the shit out of this Grongi. This Grongi is now fearing for his life. He doesn't even have... He's not even getting hit by a Hisatsu. He is literally scared for his life. Doesn't even have time to like... Or He he, he is a Grongi that has the time to contemplate fearing for his existence. Not like the other ones. The other ones get hit by the Hisatsu, then they cease, then they it's explode like, and die. And you, you, have that, you have that nice moment where like that... I, I'm not saying that everything that's happening in it is nice, but thematically it's nice. Where like Godai is on top of this guy, just fucking, fucking, fucking laying into him, and all the other cops are just standing there, and like they're it's, to to them it's like kind of awkward because like shouldn't Kuga have like Ryder kicked this guy or something? Because like clearly the guy just can't fight back right now like why doesn't he just finish it and like, nobody's saying it but you can read it on you could read it off of them and they're all like they're all like well, like, well then again like he could ride or kick us out of existence so like, <laughs> they're not gonna say anything <laughs> i'm not gonna say it are you gonna say it i'm not gonna say it yeah so so uh then we get the monster trying to run away, but Goda is just like, no, you ain't getting away. Summons the Goram onto his motorcycle, and it can talk now. Oh yeah, Goram can talk now. Goram can talk now, and he just runs over the Grongi and drags him all the way to a secluded area, and then he turns... Alright, so now the Grongi is trying to attack him with its porcupine quills, and he just turns into a rising titan form. No no fucking joking around here. And just tanks it. No, 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 no. I think he turns into a rising titan to show him the futility yeah. of his efforts to try to survive. Yes, that is exactly what he's doing. He's doing that exact thing. And he takes his, 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 his rising titan sword and just starts... Laying into him. He's not doing the Hisatsu yet. He's just slashing the shit out of this porcupine Sonic monster. The the Sonic. He's just slashing the shit out of him before finally just getting him on the ground and stabbing him through the heart. Creating a gigantic explosion of fire and death. And then, like, the... 
Then there's like the fu- you can see an outline of Kuga in the fucking smoke, and then the video. The the okay. So one thing that we didn't actually we never actually talked about is at the e- at the start and end of every episode, the w- it it opens with ancient a- ancient Aztec. Oh, it it only does Kuga. the ending. In the, in the beginning, no. it's just sort of like the green kind of. Uh, it's changed on the at the beginning one. Sometimes I yeah, guess sometimes. So, I sometimes. guess I'm not. I'm it's not so, it, 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 okay, yeah. I, no, now that I think about it, it is green because all my thumbnails are green. Yeah, exactly. It's, okay, all, so it's only it, I, it, it, it starts off with green background with uh, the ancient Aztec, a, ancient Aztec, Kuga or ancient Kuga Aztec language on it, and then at the end of the episode, the background or like the ancient Aztec Kuga language is there, but the background is different depending on what was the thematically appropriate form that he had for the episode yep so and this the is of- the first time we get it black yep the first the first episode we had it white for growing form then episode two we had red for growing or for mighty form then episode three we had blue for uh dragon form and then not- there and then at the end of this episode because i haven't seen this before i turned to scott realized the significance of the black background and said we're getting ultimate in, right and he goes yep <laughs> So, un- uh, all right. So, because he's seen Common Rider Decade, and in Common Rider Decade you get an alternate version of Kuga, he already knows that there's a form called Rising Ultimate Form in Decade. So, because now I'm telling him about the Rising forms getting being upgrades, he knows that there must have been an Ultimate Form to come before the Rising Ultimate Form. So he already knows that there's going to be an Ultimate Form. Uh, but you well, know, thing, is, thing is, in Decade, he he gets Ultimate before uh, Rising Ultimate. It's just Rising Ultimate is a movie specific. Oh, form right, that it's from All Riders versus Die Shocker, right? Yeah, because uh, they 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 brainwash they brainwash. Uh, what I re- I refer to Decade Kuga as Yusuke, which is why I call this I, which is why I call this one Godai all the time. Like I, I I refer to this one as Godai and the other one I refer to as Yusuke because to me like they are definitely entirely separate characters. Yes, um, but yeah. So so now we're getting like into like uh, also what we what we kind of glossed over was uh, the the Grongi talking about what, what we glossed over was the Grongi and fighting. Yeah. So at one point, uh, who, who was it? Uh, the police. Uh, Ichijo's kohai. Yeah. His little babu partner that we haven't <laughs> seen in a while. <laughs> the thing is, like he said, like they said his name as soon as he came on screen, just to remind us who he was, and I just never remember his name. <laughs> oh, I just can't remember his name yeah. for the life of us. Uh, but he calls Sakurako-san, and he's just like, "Yeah, uh, we need your expertise." And she's just like, "Why?" And she and they're just like, "Yeah, we gotta." 34 dead bodies, and they're just like, what? And it's like, we're pretty sure it's related to the Grongi, because they have the Grongi tattoos. And then she's like, okay, yeah, I'll go. And uh, so they get there, and it's it's a literal bloodbath. Like, like the, the play, the, like, there's... All the ketchup. All the ketchup. Uh, all, all the raspberry jam. Yeah, uh, they, uh, it, in, somebody decided to take a bottle of ketchup and, uh, wrote Kuga on a wall. The, the Kuga symbol. Uh, well, you could just say he wrote Kuga. Well, but uh, either way, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they they presume <laughs> that it was number zero, like Big Dick Number Zero, the one who rezzed for, all of the dead Grongi for a reason that we have yet to understand. And we see a little bit of him when he goes and because the bat is bat bat guy. He has he's been trying to talk shit again. And uh, he's get he start he starts getting a little he's starting to get like a little hasty, little he's uppity, like, yeah, a little uppity. And he goes, "Man, you guys keep you guys keep making fun of me, but I'm gonna let you know that I." And then they're like, "What are you gonna do?" And he's like, "Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, never yeah. mind, never mind." Big, never, b- no. b- big dick number zero comes in. Oh, oh, you're gonna you're gonna say something? Can we say it to my it, face? It's, it, no, he goes. He goes. You're gonna say something. I want to hear what you have to say because it sounds like you're gonna say something exciting. And then he's like, he's like, no, no, nothing. I wasn't gonna say anything. And he goes, Are you sure you weren't gonna say anything? And then he just leaves. And it's really dark in this room, but you can see the outline of number zero. And he kind of, mm. he's got that, he's got that, he's got that Kuga esque. 
He kind of looks like a rider. He kind of hmm, hmm. It was kind of int- kind of interesting. Uh, you know what we did forget to mention though? What? Long, long ago, way in the beginning, uh, that when they did a uh, a DNA scan of the Grongi, that they said instead of being close to animal DNA, it was really close to human DNA. Whatever. Oh, mm, mm, it's kind of. Mm. It's kind of mm, kind of tying together, especially when you see those grongi that create weapons from things that look like their weapons, kind of like what Kuga does with his weapons. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> but uh, but at, at this point, uh, yeah, Kuga's winding down. We're getting ready for our for our for our grando finale. We're we're uh, we're, we're about to. See number zero, the big, the big evil bad guy, the 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 dark lord of the Grongi, the one who who f- fucking massacred uh, members of his own tribe for whatever reason, uh, and all the we're gonna learn what the Gagarus are all about. Yeah, we are. Funny thing is that during the porcupines, Gagaru, uh, when the lady in roses and the judge are talking, they're. Uh, he goes, oh man, the get porcupine's one off. He's about like he's super close, and then the lady in roses says, "Regardless if he gets that last kill, we are almost done." Like we, like he, they, she implies that their plan, like regardless if he finishes, or he finishes his gegeru successfully, the final gegeru will be complete. Yep. Yep. So, uh, uh, I get, I guess. I guess bad guys win. Uh, we get to we get to usher in a new age of darkness. Uh, I will I will gladly uh, welcome my new uh, ancient Aztec monster overlords. Uh, 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 you you mean like our littlest cancer patient did that one time? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. The difference is I am accepting. Like I I know <laughs> I'm human and I accept my inferiority to our new masters. He tried to play it off like he was one. And didn't get him very far. Uh, especially didn't get him far when he showed up again. When I, I was fucking wrong. I was so fucking wrong. He definitely showed up, but it wasn't important whatsoever. That's why we didn't I mean, talk you any did, about you it. Did, you did say that he doesn't show up to an important capacity if he shows up at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I was wrong. He, def- he definitely didn't. Definitely he got didn't. a B plot. Like, that was way more than what I remember. No, he got a C plot, sir. B plot implies that he made interactions with Godai. I would argue... A plot is Yo, you, yeah, you, you, you help better the protagonist. B plot, you got you you interact with him, nothing happens. C plot doesn't even no, nothing even happens. I don't know. He punched Subaki in the face. It's whatever. Subaki will get over it. Subaki, Subaki didn't even care. He just sandbagged the punch. He just he was like, "You punched me." No, no it, he doesn't. It's it not feel. even like a, you punched me. It's like he, the guy punches Subaki, and then Subaki continues. The guy, the, his speech on why this guy needs to fucking just shut up and man the fuck up. Yeah, but I, but he really wanted to have his drawing on that T ad, on that on that T poster, the green T. So you don't care. You're not a tea person. You're a coffee person. You wouldn't understand. No, I drink tea too. I just right now I'm in the process of. I just haven't gotten my uh, water thing yet. Mm. Either way. Uh, yeah, Littlest Cancer Patient got his time in the limelight, and then he got time in his lemon light, and, uh, no one cared. Uh, you were right, I was gonna forget to talk about this, and it's like, even though I was, like, adamant about not forgetting about, <laughs> about not forgetting about him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, he, he, Alan wanted to make sure that he didn't forget about Littlest Cancer Patient, just so he could say he, he had, forgot he about had it. He so much, he, like, when he first showed up, there was so much potential of what he could have been. And then he just turned out to be a fucking putz. Oh, it was fantastic. And by fantastic, I mean tragic. <laughs> and by tragic, I mean no one gave a shit. But uh, it's uh, basically at this point, that's all the episodes we're talking about. A uh, little little bit uh, shorter than last time, mainly because there was less episodes to talk about. A lot. About 30 minutes shorter. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we were able to... Um, 
what was it condensed condensed a lot of it down uh, because of formulaic stuff, and this time we only really talked about big key points. Uh, I mean, I I just assume that every time is going to be like this anyway. Yeah, yeah, we're, uh, we're, start, we're getting there. Next part, we're going to finish up Kuga and even talk about the one-hour Christmas special. There was a Christmas special? Yes, there was. Oh, man. 